All right, I think we can get started. Well, hello everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar, Charting a Course Towards Public-Private Partnerships. My name is Amy Holmes. I am the Membership Associate with, at the National States Geographic Information Council. If you are unfamiliar with our organization, NISGIC exists to advance effective national coordination of the geospatial information by supporting state level cooperation. We serve as a national forum for the development of capable and future oriented geospatial leadership. If you'd like to more, know more information on how to get involved with us, please visit our website at www.nisgic.org. I will pop that in the address chat box shortly. Some reminders for today, all attendees have been muted on entrance. There will be time at the end of the presentation for Q&A. And during our presentation, our chat will be monitored for questions and comments. If you'd like to add any questions or comments, please place your, them into the chat box. Additionally, a recorded version of the webinar will be made available afterwards, so be on the lookout for an email with information. And with that, I'd like to introduce today's presenters, Robert Hoyler and the TomTom Tom team. I will now turn it over to Robert. Uh, thank you, Amy. It's uh, good to be here with uh, everybody today. Um, so the idea of this, uh, this webinar is uh, to really to uh, move, move forward from the, uh, the P3 we we webinar that occurred or the fire chat that occurred uh, last month. Um, and I'll explain the, uh, the algebraic looking uh, subtitle here, uh, the T2, P3 plus one. Um, it's actually not algebra, but obviously the P3 stands for uh, public-private partnerships. Uh, the plus one, uh, if you were at the uh, fireside chat, you knew you know what that's all about, but we're going to explain that as well. Uh, the T2 is a representation, representation of TomTom. -tom. However, we opted to do the T2 approach because this topic really goes beyond TomTom. -tom. Um, this isn't meant to be a, a sales presentation, but instead a presentation to really uh, pull a lot of, uh, lot of thoughts together in terms of the opportunities that might exist for all of us uh, in terms of the path towards uh, public-private partnerships. So uh, most of you know me, uh, so I'm not gonna wait, waste time on an introduction uh, of myself. Um, but I would like to um, introduce my uh, my two colleagues who's going who's going to be joining me uh, today, uh, and actually I'll have them give a brief uh, self introduction. So we'll start with uh, with Brandy. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Brandy Boyle, and I'm the uh, lead for our sourcing operations group for Canada and the eastern region of the United States for the TomTom Tom Maps organization. Um, I'm actually based in a remote home office in Atlanta, Georgia. So it's it's great to be with the NISGIC community again today. I know I'm seeing um, some familiar names as people are calling in, and so it's great to uh, to see some familiar names from previous virtual sessions. I started to get involved with the NISGIC community, um, you know, in my role role with TomTom Tom a little over a year ago and my first uh, virtual conference was in September and then again doing some participation in some other NISGIC events uh, in the virtual environment here this past year. So I hope everyone's doing well. Um, and yeah, just to give some background about me and, and why I'm here, I guess, um, and, and you'll see this in the way that we talk about what we do, but yeah, I mean, why I'm here is, you know, I love maps and I love helping people. And I feel like the the role that I have here in the sourcing ops group within TomTom Tom Maps is I get uh, an opportunity to do things like this that put those two things together. Um, so yeah, hopefully today will be uh, really helpful and engaging for everyone. And of course, any questions or any follow-up information we're always available. So. And uh, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Tim. Good morning or afternoon, depending on if you're on the West Coast or East Coast. Um, my name is Tim Bethke. I've been with TomTom Tom for 18 years now. Uh, I'm based out of uh, New Hampshire. Originally, I'm from Maryland. I moved up here about 20 years ago, so I guess I can't technically say I'm from Maryland anymore, but uh, I still claim my Maryland roots. Um, my primary role is for sourcing operations. I, my territory traditionally is um, New York to Maine, but I also cover Maryland and Washington, D.C., um, although with things currently the way they are, I span the entire East Coast, uh, depending on where we need to uh, uh, focus. My other responsibilities is the trusted partner opportunities, which we'll be talking about later on today. Um, and I, I'll leave that for when we get to there. So other than that, that's it. All right. Thank you, Tim. And, and then finally, 
uh, want to recognize everyone else on the call because you're going to be just as integral uh, a component to this as uh, the three of us. Um, we really want to make this uh, a starting point um, to really generate ideas uh, and enthusiasm for uh, being able to, to generate uh, public-private uh, partnership uh, sort of uh, uh, scenarios moving forward. So uh, please take advantage of the, uh, the chat functionality uh, over the course of the call. We want to, we want to make sure that we um, can take advantage of the ideas that might pop into your head as we're running through some of these, uh, these concepts over the, over the course of, um, of the presentation. Uh, afterwards, we want to then pull those together and really help uh, see if we can take some next steps towards uh, generating some additional formalities um, with, with this sort of uh, approach. So please, uh, please be participative. Um, you know, we're trying to, um, you know, provide a good, good foundation here for everybody. So um, when we talk through the objectives, um, Continuing on here, we, we want to talk about just some basic concepts. Um, I'm not speaking to you as an expert on the topic, but really just somebody is a vested with a vested interest. We, we see the potential that exists for these sorts of uh, relationships and, and certainly within the, uh, the NISJIC organization, uh, we've already been able to, um, to see some of the benefits that come about with, uh, with some of this, co this uh, collaboration. So really, it's, it's stimulating the ideas. Uh, as a part of this, we are going to provide some examples of uh, some of the things that uh, TomTom Tom has been doing and would like to continue to do uh, as a company that, uh, that supports uh, these approaches as well. Um, and, and again, this is going to be a starting point. Um, we want to take a lot of information from here and uh, be able to continue to put our heads together um, down the road uh, as well. So I guess a good starting point for this is looking at uh, the definition of what a pr public-private partnership is. Uh, and this definition is, uh, is one that was uh, developed by uh, NGAC. Um, I think uh, there, there's quite a number of, of definitions out, out there, but this one really, um, put, really encapsul encapsulates everything nicely. So basically, uh, the sort of P3 is, is going to have some sort of formal agreement. Um, and a big element of that is there's going to be shared risk and reward um, on each side. And it gives the, the public side the opportunity to, uh, to leverage the skills and assets of the private sector, which may not be readily available uh, or scalable um, on the public side. And as we move through this, the, the common focus is that uh, how can we better deliver the, the products and services that, uh, that are going to be utilized uh, by the general public. So that's really the common theme uh, throughout all of this. And so even though we have the, uh, the formal definition here, um, how we get there is, is really going to be up to us. And we're not looking for one single path. Um, each organization is gonna have certain things that are gonna be more important to them, uh, more um, capable to be accomplished uh, and things like that. So uh, we have that unique aspect to work through. Um, so what we're gonna go through today is just some guidelines of, of what that might look like, some things to think about that about on the way. Um, but it's not meant to be a blueprint. Um, it's certainly not going to, um, to have a blanket uh, approach, but we want to identify, first of all, identify the needs that are out there and, uh, and, and share the ideas. And I think uh, with, if we're able to do that, then um, we're going to get quite a few uh, new ideas that will, uh, will come together over time. All right, so at, as a first step, uh, to this is there is no there is no menu for public private partnerships. You know we we can't go to the menu and say all right yeah this is the one that looks good I think that's gonna gonna fit me. 
Um, it just doesn't exist. So, so when we talk about building this out, I think it's, well, it, it's definitely creating opportunities. Um, the opportunities aren't necessarily going to be staring us in the face. Uh, we need to look and see um, what's going to be the most relevant for, for our particular needs. Um, and again, it's creating opportunities associated with public private partnerships. There isn't necessarily going to be a, a switch to, to, uh, to, to flip and we, we end up with a solution. Um, so the process is what's going to be the right fit for, for us. And that's what, uh, that's where the P3 plus one concept comes in. We want to look beyond the, the formal definition of what a P3 is and incorporate that plus one, which is the, uh, the preliminary step or, or proposed um, piece uh, of that. And how do we take those initial steps to, uh, to build some momentum? And again, keeping in mind the, uh, the common objectives that we have and the mutual benefits uh, which will result. Um, the other thing is that as we're working through this, it, again, it's not gonna happen overnight. So that brings us to the other P3, which is the patience, perseverance, and practicality. Certainly, definitely something to, uh, to keep in mind as we work, uh, work through this. So what does this all look like? There's, there's a number of business relationships that, uh, that, we're probably, that we've probably been involved with uh, over time. In some cases, um, they might be referred to as P3s incorrectly by definition, but yet, um, you know, that, that's an easy way to, uh, to reference them because essentially it still is a relationship between a public entity and, and a private entity. So with the list that's provided here, um, again, these are the, the standard uh, sorts of relationships that, uh, that exist out here. And what I'm going to do, and don't get overwhelmed by this matrix, but I want to show a relationship uh, be between each of these. And, um, and we're not going to go through all, all of this information, but I think it's going to be helpful uh, as a reference piece um, when you look back at this later on. So basically, if you're working from, uh, from top to bottom, you know, an independent relationship, you know, you're, you're doing your own thing, you're, you're tied to your, your internal policies and so forth, and that offers a lot of flexibility. But there, there's a, there could be some limitations that exist due to capacity issues, technical issues, budget issues, those sorts of things. Um, and so working, working down, you might get to uh, more of a standard uh, vendor relationship where that's great. That solves a particular need that you have. But once that need is met, that's really the extent of, of that, um, that vendor being able to help you out. And so when you get to the collaborative aspect, that's, that's where things really get interesting and where we really want to focus on to, to build some momentum because that's where you can start to get the benefits of maybe some of the vendor relationship, but because of the, the collaborative nature, uh, you have the opportunity to start developing new ideas and uh, better understanding where some of the synergies might be uh, in, in terms of um, resolving some of the other challenges that, uh, that exist out there. Um, as we work down through this, uh, the li this list, we also see that the interactions become uh, more important, as does the formality. Um, obviously, if you're an independent, you know, you're only working with your, uh, your own policies and so forth. Uh, once you get down to the P3s, you have a very structural, uh, very structured uh, agreement uh, and relationship in place. And that's good in some aspects. In other aspects, it might not um, provide the, the flexibility that, that's needed for your particular situation. So the idea is trying to find the, the sweet spot in here that meets the needs of your particular uh, organization. The other thing to, uh, to highlight here is the, the difference between a traditional P3 and a geospatial P3. Um, 
probably a number of states I know are involved with uh, traditional P3s. Um, and that's through support for inf infrastructure projects, other maintenance projects and so forth. Uh, and those, those work very well. Um, however, when you get into the geospatial world, uh, although the concepts are, are the same, you have a number of other challenges uh, that, uh, that are out there. Um, it's a more dynamic approach. Typically, it's not a uh, handling a project end to end. And then you have other uh, competitive aspects and legal constraints and so forth as, as well. So there's a lot of things to think through on, in here. So again, looking for feedback from you all, um, you know, what sort of things would uh, would make the most sense for you all to um, take advantage of in, in this sort of um, collaborative relationship with uh, the things that you need to accomplish for, uh, for your particular um, situation. And as you get into the, the P3 element, um, you know, looking at what some of the challenges are on the, the public side. Um, you know, I've, obviously, I have uh, some good insights on on the uh, the private side uh, challenges, but uh, we really want to learn more more about um, you know some of the the constraints that we might need to work through on the uh, the public side as well. So again, if anybody has any ideas relating to that, put them in the chat. It'd be great to um, to follow up on those later. Rob, there is a comment in the chat or, or a question and a comment. Uh, so maybe before we move on to this slide, um, going back to the previous slide, um, the question is the evolving definition of formality to these partnerships seems critical. Can you share some thoughts on when to transition from informal collaborations to a more structured approach? Sure, sure. So, uh, yeah, so we've got the collaborative basic and then the collaborative advanced. And, and the reason that we broke that out into two separate rows is because you want to have the flexibility to, to really explore the ideas um, and, and so forth. And this is going to come into play a little bit more on, on, on the next slide as well when we show some of the relationships. But um, when you're first getting started and so, sometimes you, you tend to want to jump right into the formality uh, in terms of, um, well, we want to do this. We, we got to make sure that, um, you know, we have all the expectations covered. We, we have, you know, the requirements, this is how we're going to do it. Um, but the reality, the reality is, it takes some time to really figure out what you want to do, how you want to do it, uh, and, and so forth. And unless you have that that time where you have a little bit more of the the informal uh, interaction, um, you're I think you're really not going to get to the point where you're going to have that comfort level of signing an agreement or putting putting even 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 if it's a little bit more basic of an agreement out there um you know in, until this this stuff gets uh gets fleshed out and and so that's that's really where we look where we look at the difference is is with the basic element you're developing the ideas you're trying to put some uh, small scale pilots together where you can prove the concept, um, develop the ideas uh, and so forth. And then once, you, once you've reached that piece, then it becomes a lot more, a lot easier to then translate that into, um, you know, the formal expectations and where do we wanna take this, um, this project from, from here. Yeah, we also posted an open-ended question in the chat that we got a few comments on too. Um, the the open-ended question from us was, what are some examples of preliminary P3 initiatives or discussions in the geospatial sector? 
um, that might be launching or that could provide a wider benefit for public safety and, and uh, public benefits. And there's um, some, some comments reminding us of some of those examples that we're all probably already familiar with. And one of them is the National Address Database, um, you know, as an example of a framework layer that could evolve into, uh, you know, a P3. Um, so thanks for that note, Karen. Um, and Frank provided a, an additional comment there. We can easily get started on formal collaborative partnerships using openly available data. So, um, and again, the, the NAD's a good example of that. So. Yeah, so we, we certainly don't want to reinvent the wheel. It's just sometimes you need to um, look at it the right way. I mean, there there's, uh, if you try to roll the wheel, it works a lot better than trying to flip the wheel as if you were, um, you know, working an exercise routine. So uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's just trying to figure that out in terms of, all right, what's the right alignment? And are we all going in, in the same direction to, to make it most effective? And, and I think that's, that's a big part of what happens during the, the basic element there is, is just trying to figure out, all right, what, what already exists that we might be able to take advantage of? How relevant is it for the needs that are out there? And are there particular constraints that, that we need to work through? Um, one of the comments that I have, I think, on one of the, uh, the subsequent slides, though, is that we, we don't want to get hung up on the, the constraints at, at this point. I think we, we want to have a, a wide perspective of what do we want to accomplish and, and just brainstorm the ideas. You know, then from there, a, again, just like moving from the, the basic to the advanced, now you have a better picture of how you want to, to want to attack those, those constraints that do exist. And, and certainly there are going, going to be some, but if you have a, a better idea of, of where you want to go, um, then I think you're going to be more successful uh, in the long run and, and certainly um, better off than if you had dismissed an idea early on just simply because you know it's, it's just such a new concept and well now we've we've never done it that way so we can't do it that way um and, and that's something we want to try to to work past and in some cases we'll be successful maybe others we won't but we need to give ourselves the opportunity to succeed Okay, so that that all that kind of ties again into into this slide is because now we're talking about ideas to um, take us through that progression of the different different levels that were on the previous slide. Um, you see the uh, the five elements here, um, general categories. We're going to utilize this uh, these five things as, as kind of the uh, the foundation of a lot of the the next uh, things that we talk through. Um, but you can see with, with the, uh, the, the diagram here is that uh, you know, when you're starting with facilitation, um, you're typically not going to jump right into a trusted partnership. That's something that's going to evolve through engagement and, and collaboration. Uh, whereas in, in some cases, through the facilitation phase, you understand you have a particular need. And if you've identified a particular vendor that can solve that for you, well, then there's no need to go through the collaborative phase. You go right to the, uh, the, the, the service or, or vendor phase from there. Um, but again, once you have that, then perhaps it could circle back around and, and tie back into uh, some more collaborative efforts um, through some engagement as well. So generally speaking, uh, the progression would, would begin with the facilitation phase, go to the engagement, then the collaboration, and then trusted partnerships and dynamic pro products and services. And then ultimately those things uh, collectively could end up resulting in, in a, uh, a more formal P3. Uh, in other cases, uh, your situation might, uh, might indicate that you know, once we've reached the, the collaboration or trusted partnership phase, you know, maybe that's sufficient for the time being to, to meet the, uh, the needs that, uh, that currently exist. 
So this is this is just the general progression that we're going to be thinking through uh, today. And the next slides, we're going to show some examples of each of those and uh, and also provide uh, some insights into some of the things that uh, that TomTom Tom has been involved with to uh, to support those elements. So starting with uh, facilitation. Um, yeah, you know, really, it's, it's this is the basic level is where you're understanding you know, what what the needs are, recognizing potential opportunities. Um, as we're doing today, just sharing some con conceptual guidance, trying to uh, to get people thinking along the same lines uh, to create the ideas. Um, but ultimately, we, we need to have the willingness uh, of participants to to advance the idea. So again, that's starting today. Um, you know, through the involvement of the, uh, the chats and something that then we want to carry over beyond, beyond this, uh, this presentation as well. Um, and so there's, there's some examples of, of things that uh, we're doing in particularly, but a couple of the things that, that really jump out uh, for everybody is, is the importance of, of asking questions and, and not only asking the questions, but listening to the answers uh, that, that you're getting. Um, creating that better understanding of, of what the, what the needs are and, and how you how you as well speaking from a, the private perspective how we might be able to uh, support those particular things uh, and then again having having that willingness to step beyond the uh, the comfort level um, the promoting advancement columns uh, again we just tried to throw some ideas out there um of some ideas that uh might be uh beneficial for the both the public side and the public and the private side to uh to promote each of these uh these categories um so i'm not going to read through all of these you all can uh, can do that but uh, again it, it starts with um you know the, the recognition and then starting to uh develop the uh, the ideas. One of the things that um, that Tom Tom uh, does and more more of a static approach um, is on our website, we have the Tom Tom traffic index. And this is something that uh, we update, uh, usually January uh, timeframe each year, we look at uh, a number of worldwide cities. We've got uh, over 400 cities that we, we do these uh, analyses of uh, each year. And it's, it provides a, an additional element and background to what's going on with the traffic uh, in, in those cities. So it, it's free access. Anybody can go to our website and, and look this up. Um, again, we don't have all of the cities uh, covered for this, but, um, you know, Brandy, you know, Atlanta, you, you, you know, uh, Atlanta is just terrible traffic. Um, but the, the elements that, uh, that are brought to light through this uh, traffic index report um, really provide a, an interesting perspective of what's going on. Um, during the particular time frames of the day, trends, um, you know, comparing pre-COVID, post-COVID, um, you know, how, how much time you're actually losing, um, you know, sitting in rush hour. Maybe that's a bit depressing, but it's it's an interesting insight that that maybe you wouldn't otherwise have for for traffic. So, um, encourage you to check that out. Um, you know, even if your city uh, is is not uh, available there, um, be interesting to look at because uh, again, it's a snapshot of other things that could be possible within the uh, the traffic uh, analytics that uh, that Tom Tom offers. Um, so now we're moving on to the engagement phase. So Brandy um, is going to talk through a couple of uh, examples here. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, so yeah, kind of getting into the uh, the engagement phase within this uh, framework of what we're talking about here. Um, some examples that we're we're starting to share, and I did see uh, Nate's note in the chat about the Work Zone Data Exchange. So you'll see the the logo there for that initiative um, in this engagement um, slide. But 
just some examples that we've started to become a little bit involved with without having uh, you know any kind of formal uh, you know relationships or formal business agreements or service agreements things like that that's really what we wanted to highlight in talking about the engagement piece um, so coming you know from my perspective from the private sector and from my experience in TomTom -Tom, uh, really what what we do here in the sourcing operations group is, uh, you know, we have a goal for engagement with our local contacts with the local authoritative data suppliers. Um, so it's really baked into what we do in the maps group here within TomTom. Tom. Again, you know, we're not the sales group, we definitely support, uh, you know, sales initiatives and we support things, but we are on the map side. So our focus is really on the location information and in terms of engagement, what we do here within the sourcing op operations group within MAPS is try to focus on in engagement um, from the location perspective too. So just a couple examples that we had recently um, that have come up uh, that have started to become really uh, fruitful, I think just in terms of the, the engagement piece is we started to get a little bit more involved with um, the enterprise pooled fund study. Um, again, this is something that was a DOT initiative for a number of DOTs uh, within the United States and also including uh, one of the ministries of transportation in Canada. Um, but there was some outreach that was presented to us and we were able to kind of take it to the next level and start to provide some examples from the TomTom -Tom perspective and, and from just overall the commercial mapping perspective of how we could be more available to receive information or to to share information that's provided from the departments of transportation in relation to either static uh, map data updates or dynamic, uh, you know, in terms of temporary road closure updates, things like that. So um, that's been a really interesting um, thing that we've been involved with in the past few months. And as some of you all may be familiar with it or some of your colleagues within your state agencies um, on the DOT side might be already involved with that initiative too and providing feedback. So it's been really helpful in, you know, making us available as a direct contact, you know, providing that opportunity for engagement directly from the DOTs. And also, you know, giving us some opportunity if we have a question or if we have something really specific about a location that we can get access to an authoritative um, data provider, um, you know, right at the source. Um, another example, you know, aside from our involvement with NISJIC, which has also been really, really helpful and really fruitful in terms of networking and just getting these general conversations and taking it to the next level of engagement has been uh, an opportunity that came out of some NISJIC involvement, but to support the Georgia GIO office. So I'm not sure if Susan's on the call here, but Susan and her team have been doing some really amazing work in Georgia, um, trying to set up the NG911 data standards. And so we were in invited uh, by their group to, to get involved in the working group. And over the past few months, the, the Georgia GIO's office has led a working group and we've been able to just be there and be available to answer questions, um, you know, on behalf of the, the commercial data uh, perspective, you know, what the use cases might be for open data, things like that. Um, so it's been really interesting to be involved in those discussions and, and to be able to be in the meetings in the working group as a supporter of what the, the work that they're doing. Um, and again, we don't necessarily have a, a formal agreement or any kind of formal service level agreement in place with, um, you know, Georgia or with the GIA office, but we have that opportunity to be there in an informal way to engage and to answer questions. And again, to be available to our other colleagues within the working group that have questions, um, you know, related to specific use cases and some things that have come up, you know, as questions would be understanding, for example, like how addresses are assigned. Um, we know that they're assigned at the local level, but it's been a really interesting thing, um, you know, discussing understanding what the authoritative providers are and what their challenges are. So when they do uh, assign an address, how does a commercial location application know when a new address is assigned or when a new address is brought in to the mix? And so we've had some discussions related to that um, and how to facilitate that to make sure from the public safety standpoint um, that the information is out there and it can be accessed uh, as quickly as and efficiently as possible. 
Um, another question kind of in the engagement realm is related to temporary road closure information. Again, with you know our authoritative data, data suppliers of those local contacts, they're the ones making the decisions at the local level about these type of, of closures that directly impact real-time navigation applications. You know, so in the case of TomTom, we're really interested in making sure that we have that uh, real-time information from the authoritative uh, you know, providers of that information so that we can incorporate that into our systems and get it out to the users as fast as possible, which again would facilitate, uh, you know, a public safety concern and to try and keep things uh, much safer on the roads and, and eliminate traffic whenever possible. So yeah, I mean, we, we definitely value um, our, our ability to be responsive in this engagement piece and, uh, you know, have that local knowledge perspective on a GIS data situation. So again, you know, if we do get questions from our contacts, the local level, you know, we already kind of know what maybe some of their challenges are in terms of funding, in terms of things that they're, um, you know, that their constituents are interested in getting access to things like that. So, uh, and, you know, we know that some of y'all may already have, um, you know, actual sales agreements in place for certain TomTom Tom products. And, and if you do, we thank you. We, of course, appreciate that. Um, and we support our sales team. And of course, we want to be uh, responsive. But again, we're, we're in the MAPS group and really location is at the focus of what we're doing. So we want to make sure that we're engaging, you know, in this piece, in this kind of preliminary discussion about P3s, that, you know, that engagement piece for us is going to be more focused on the, the location and the location intelligence piece rather than, the, you know, kind of the, the making the sales part. But yeah, like Rob mentioned before, finding out what the challenges are from um, our public sector practitioners that really helps us understand where we might need to go in terms of providing support or providing products or services that um, would would be helpful in this engagement piece so and again for us we look at engagement as something as simple as a conversation uh, you know maybe with a, a local government uh, contact to answer a question to help them better understand you know, how a commercial mapping application is displaying a certain location or performing a certain navigation function. You know, we have those conversations with our colleagues in the public sector, you know, pretty regularly to try and provide that, uh, you know, engagement education piece about how our systems work and how our systems use the data that's put out there. And um, the, kind of the next piece too, like Rob was flipping to the next slide, just looking at our process, you know, our map making proce process, going back to the location piece is, um, you know, looking at the, the different components. And again, within our sourcing operations group, we're really interested in getting information about the sources of information from the authoritative data suppliers. That's the, the really important piece for us, finding where the changes are and making sure to continue that feedback loop and, and get things turned around as quick as possible so that you know the constituents in these areas have access to the the updated data through these commercial applications as quickly as possible so and, and we know just from our experience in the engagement piece too that you know it requires research and time on the tom tom side we definitely value knowing the the local situation knowing the the standards knowing the challenges um, and we know things like you know a rural region or a rural county is going to have a different priority or different challenges in their geospatial practices compared to say, for example, uh, you know, a city or uh, we know that a coastal region is gonna have different challenges related to their GIS needs compared to a mountainous region, just uh, things like that that we've experienced through our engagement with, uh, you know, our local contacts and being available to be a, a piece in this uh, cycle of how we make our maps, so. And then in the next piece, we just wanted to kind of quickly touch on uh, active community input. Uh, this is sort of our uh, way of saying like, this is how we, you know, just one piece of how we might receive information. You know, we know we have these informal relationships where there's phone calls happening. There's, uh, you know, face-to-face -face meetings happening. There's, uh, you know, there's engagement in community geospatial groups, things like that. But really we, we do have some templates for, uh, you know, input for how the map data might need to be updated. So, and our, our map share reporter is just one piece, um, but again, this is a, a free available tool that anybody um, has public access to. You just have to uh, utilize the, the platform, sign on, uh, you know, just create a user account and people can start providing direct feedback on map updates that they may know about that we, they just wanna make sure that to cover all the bases that any commercial map company would wanna um, have updated in their systems, so. All right. Thank you, Brandy. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. So moving on to uh, collaboration 
and uh, we're going to kind of pick up the pace a little bit uh, with this uh, simply because this group has uh, already has a lot of background on what we're doing uh, from the collaborative piece, um, particularly with, uh, with the pilots that we've been doing with, uh, with Utah. Um, we actually just uh, took a new element to that and did incorporated a, an address point uh, analysis uh, that we, we provided to them. And actually we're in the process of doing the same thing for uh, New York. So Frank will have some, uh, we'll have a report out to you uh, coming, uh, coming soon for, uh, for your review. But this, this, is, this is the stage where we start to act upon uh, a more identified focus. Um, we've already done some brainstorming and so forth through the facilitation and the engagement. This is, this is where we decide, okay, we've got some good ideas. How can we start to develop them and, uh, and, and begin to, to find a, uh, an appropriate direction uh, and, and build a structure upon that? So then moving from the, the, that basic collaborative uh, effort to, to more of an advanced collaboration stage. Um, and, and again, it relies on the, the willingness of the individuals to, to have that proactive uh, communication. Um, so again, um, you know, if there is, if this sounds like something that, that might be of interest to, to your uh, particular organization in terms of looking at some of the data validation uh, piece, um, you know, we'd love to uh, discuss some ideas with you. Um, again, you know, with what we're doing with, uh, with Utah, uh, we're still at the very, very kind of informal uh, phase just based upon um, building things into the mix as, as it fits within our schedule. But uh, nonetheless, we're continuing to move it forward. And I know that, uh, you know, Matt and Greg are, are big propo propo proponents of uh, collaboration in general. Um, so, you know, they're, they're a good resource to, to reach out to. Um, you know, about what we're doing specifically or, or just the topic uh, in, in general. Um, so that's, uh, that's a good approach to take. And certainly from our, uh, our perspective, you know, we, we want to uh, have those conversations and continue to, to learn more about uh, what, the opp what opportunities arise and how we might be able to, uh, to support some of the, uh, the public initiatives. Um, this slide, uh, a lot of the information on here has been uh, been seen before, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. But uh, you know, again, basically what we're looking at from our current collaborative approaches, it's been been focused upon the the data validation pieces and uh, and change detection techniques. So basically, there's a lot of things that uh, we can employ uh, from our perspective that maybe. Um, will help stretch the uh, capabilities on the, uh, the public side. Um, one of the ways that we, we look at uh, the change detection is through our, our uh, probe data. So with, with the GPS information that comes in from all of the, the sensors and so forth from our various users, whether it be from, from uh, smartphone devices through in-vehicle sensors and things like that. Um, that's how we get uh, some, some insights in terms of where the new roads might be uh, and how to, uh, to identify uh, potential issues within the data and so forth. So um, this just provides a, uh, a good example of, um, of how that occurs. Um, I mentioned the, the address point analysis um, again, um, we're, we're taking some of the capabilities that uh, we're utilizing um, for our standard business practices and, uh, and now employing them to, uh, to cross check or, or cross compare with the, uh, the statewide data sets. So it's not the intent to, to find errors, but yet uh, identify areas of interest and, and really the big uh, objective for this right now, at least for from the TomTom -tom perspective, is um, being able to promote the realignment of, of address points, particularly in those uh, building complexes, which, which have multiple buildings tied to uh, a particular 
uh, address, but are only coming across as, as stacked. So we want to be able to unstack those and, and place them where, where the actual building locations are. Uh, it's one thing to be able to do that through, um, say, building footprint sources uh, to get the locations, but we really need that authoritative data to then correctly tie the, uh, the addresses and building information uh, to those. So that, that's where the collaborative piece comes in. We can, we can provide some leads, uh, maybe streamline the process of, of where the, uh, the state needs to look for uh, maintenance activities, but then relying on them to, to provide the, uh, the details uh, for us. Um, and again, we, we get into um, kind of the specific things that we're looking for, uh, and this will be available in the, um, in the presentation for your reference later. But in the interest of time, I want to make sure we move forward and get to uh, Tim's uh, portion here with uh, regard to uh, trusted partnerships and the dynamic products and services. So Tim, um, I'll turn it over to you with, with about... Uh, 10 minutes or 10, 12 minutes to go. Just, we have a few minutes at the end. To I'm going to I'm gonna try to be short and sweet here and, and, and get to the uh, high level points. So obviously you trust a partner is just that it's the idea is that I'm building a relationship with individuals, either at the county level, local level, or even at the private level. Um, the trusted partner program is just that we, I'm hoping that you and I can work together to build that relationship so that we can get the data in here or correct problems that you may identify or help solve problems that you're getting from your constituents. Um, I, I had a prime example the other day where I was dealing with an issue out, out in Utah, or not Utah, um, Colorado, uh, where we, uh, we had some truck restrictions that were missing. And because of those missing truck restrictions, uh, they were having traffic being routed down roads that weren't meant for trucks. So work, I worked with the gentleman uh, specifically and we were able to solve that problem. And he was able to go back to his constituents and say, hey, listen, in the near future, we're gonna be able to solve that problem for you guys and be able to have traffic routed the correct way. So Rob, can you go to the next slide? So this is, so generally what happens is with the Trusted Partner Program, if you're interested, you get, you get a hold of myself or any one of my colleagues that are a part of the program and we'll go through a quick demo of the whole entire program. This slide here is just giving you an idea of how we, we get to that point. Rob, can you go to the next slide? Because I'm going to try to keep, keep moving here. This is just an example of some of our many customers that we utilize, uh, Uber and Microsoft being the, the two that I want to bring your attention to because they utilize the, this road event reporter, which is part of the trusted partner program. As you can see, there's a lot of other customers on there um, that we utilize, that utilize our traffic information. This is just a short list. Uh, if you wanna see the longer list, it's actually out there on the web. So the way it works is you contact myself or you contact one of my colleagues. There's about 10, 10 or 20 of us somewhere in that range that actually are a part of all, that does the same, the same jobs I do. Come talk, to, come talk to us. We figure out, you know, how you fit into the program. We sign you up. Uh, it's simple user user agreement form. Um, Gene, I see you're on the call. Um, I went through this whole process with uh, Gene um, last week. He's based out of California. Go ahead. We sign you up. You get access to the form, and then what happens is, or access to the uh, web-based portal. And through the web-based portal, you're able to go in there and actually make road closure updates accordingly. Why do you want to do that? Well, you have an API. It's great. You know, the problem is, is the API and our, our data don't always see one to one. Um, you might have a road closure that expands, you know, five miles, but unfortunately the way the API read, it's only that one section of road that actually closes. Well, by having access to the road rent reporter, you actually can go in there and close that entire section of road and actually make sure that the cl road closure is how you want it to see, uh, see in the database, making sure that traffic actually is getting routed accordingly. Go ahead, Rob, next one. So this gives you the general idea of how it looks. First thing you do is you go in, you select your event and there's anywhere from um, natural disasters to accidents to COVID related to, um, uh, what's, I forget the other one off the top of my head, uh, public events. Public events could be anything from a, from a demonstration, which I'll have an example uh, in a couple of slides to, um, you know, for example, last week we had the I-70 mudslide that was out in, um, out in Colorado to 
just the other day, I was dealing with, um, well, the truck restrictions in Colorado as well. So we'll, we'll use those examples. From there, you then can use the align tool or a polygon tool. The polygon tool is great because if you need to close off a large area because of, of you know, if you're having a hurricane or you're having um, some other a protest, you can close off an entire area pretty quickly versus having to go line by line. Then from there, you get to set the date and time and schedule. And from you can, there's different options there as well. And then from there, it then gets shared out to all of our users. Um, sometimes it's as quick as a minute. Sometimes it takes anywhere from 15 minutes to 20 minutes for it to get out to all of our users. But the good news is it does get out there to all of them eventually. Go ahead, Rob. So this is the one I wanted to show you. So uh, everybody knows what happened back in January down in DC. Um, this was, you know, Monday morning, everything looks, you know, fairly decent in, in DC. You're like going, oh, okay. And next thing you know, next slide. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, all heck breaks loose down in DC. And, and um, I quickly, because DC does not have an API, at least a, a formal one, I had to go in there and make sure that I was working closely with the uh, DOT, the uh, Park Service Police, the Capitol Police, and the Secret Service, which I've now all become, I've got some sort of relationship with all those uh, people now, to make sure that all those road closures were in there. The idea is that, you know, not asking you guys to go ahead and put all these closures in here, but it's it's a more collaborative relationship. Let's 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 make sure that you know you're giving me the information, or we're working together to make sure that the information that's going in there, so that people that need to get around those situations can get around them. Go ahead, Rob. So, um, this is not the slide I was expecting, Rob. So I apologize. Um, the, the things I wanted to bring up, there was, there, there's actually four pieces to the, there's also four other pieces to the uh, uh, Trusted Partner uh, Program. It's uh, Traffic Analytics and the Traffic Analytics portion. Yeah, they're coming up. Okay. Can, can you advance that slide? There we go. That's the one I was expecting. I, I know. Uh, so the nice thing about, about the uh, Trusted Partner Program is if you do like the road event reporter, there's other options to everything as well. Um, there's anything from traffic uh, traffic stats to uh, intersection uh, analytics to route monitoring to traffic index. These are all available um, to you, and in some cases you can get a trial period. Uh, but from that point forward, you know, then obviously there's there's uh, situations that that you have to work through with Rob with. But if anybody's interested in the trusted partner program, by all means, um, you know, please get in touch with me. I'd be more than happy to give you a quick demo. I know Gene can can um, maybe vouch for me and say that you know we we uh, did a pretty good job of of demonstrating of the effectiveness of it. And again, I'm trying to do what I did in a half hour in in eight minutes, so I think I accomplished that goal. So um, please, all, by all means, uh, Rob will share my contact information, and certainly I look forward to meeting any and all of you guys somewhere down the road. All right. Thank you, thank you, Tim. So the, these next few slides, um, again, are going to be available for your uh, your reference. Basically, um, going back to this one, it's just a, a slide for each of these uh, these products that are out there. So this is this is where we've kind of moved from the, uh, the 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 free collaborative aspect into what's more of a, a fee based standard product. Uh, and again, it's not our intent to, um, you know, pitch, do a sales pitch, but at the same time, you know, these, these are things that are out there and could problem solve uh, for you, uh, depending on, on some of the scenarios that you have. So, uh, you know, it's worth looking at, at these things. Um, what we don't want to do um, you know, when we have these conversations though, is, you know, do, do the broad pitch of everything. Um, you know, your, your time is much too valuable uh, to do that. So we want to be as relevant as possible with, with the conversations. So uh, to do that, again, it goes back to us having the best understanding of, of what you need to accomplish. And when, when it comes to these, uh, these traffic analytics products, um, you know, if, if we have a better understanding of the use cases, um, that way we can take some time on the front end and perhaps run some specific reports um, from these particular uh, programs for you uh, to help guide the conversations and really have that more relevant uh, discussion um, for you. So again, I, 
I urge you to take a look at this. There's more information on, on the website as well. If there's some potential interest there in any of these things, um, let us know. And, and again, in general, the, the more information you can share with us, and hopefully there's been some activity in the chats in, in terms of you know, what you think might be some, uh, some relevant use cases to explore further, um, that's going to be a great foundation. That's going to help give us some momentum as we move these discussions forward. The final piece is our mobile mapping. And again, has uh, a number of, of use cases uh, that can be uh, be possible as well. So physical road asset inventory, that's a big one. Um, road safety uh, initiatives, there's a number of uh, cities that are going through such things as the Vision Zero um, or have a need for transportation modeling, say for oversized vehicles and whatnot. Um, this is a good opportunity to provide um, the basic basic information that uh, you know might not be so basic or readily available on the, on the public side, but uh, certainly helps you all take the next next step towards uh, solving some of the uh, the issues that you have to uh, contend with on on a regular basis. So with that, um, again, thank you for your time. Um, I know we, there was a lot of material to go through, but uh, again, it's our intent to uh, try to keep the conversation going over time. So uh, we'll certainly take advantage of uh, any of the inf information that was uh, included in the chats. And uh, if you didn't have an opportunity to, uh, to put uh, any feedback in the chats and, and would like to dis discuss some ideas with us further, we'd love to have those conversations because really we're, we're all in this together and we have a really great opportunity to, um, you know, make a difference in, um, you know, really driving spatial policy, geospatial policy and um, moving forward in, in the area of um, public private partnerships. Um, I know that uh, Cy is, is very involved with this uh, as, as well. And during the uh, fireside chat, he, he kind of put the challenge out there. That he'd love to have uh, you know, some, some more formal pilots put in place over the course of the next, uh, say, six months or so. Um, so um, you know, we, we, we've got uh, a lot of support out there. Um, but we need you all to step forward and, and, and share some ideas. And we, we, love, we would love to work with you uh, in that regard. So with, with that, I will um, close it out here. Um, Amy, I'll turn it back over to you. I, I know there's, there's not gonna be really time for uh, Q&A, but if there's anything that jumped out that we want to address, certainly I have the time to, um, to go over a little bit. Well, thank you, Robert and the TomTom Tom team for this phenomenal presentation. We really appreciate all the engagement. I know as the NISHA community loves to be engaged and I think it was very informative. Um, I would like to put something in the chat. Um, in addition to the TomTom Tom emails, you can also send your questions or comments to info at nishic.org and they will be sent directly to the TomTom Tom team for for answers. Um, I believe there was one question from Frank. I'm not sure if we were went over it. It said um, his qu comment was the enterprise pulled fund study popped up on the radar last week or so. How can we combine the efforts with NAD and WZDX? I apologize for the mispronunciation on that. Um. Well, that's that was something that we, we had made reference at least to the the work zone data exchange when we had uh, done our interviews with the, uh, the enterprise pool fund uh, folks. And I, I know that um, came up as well from another, uh, from some of the other organizations, um, particularly on the DOT side. So Sinclair from uh, um, Iowa, um, she's, she's very involved with, uh, with the enterprise pool fund study and, and I know that uh, Iowa is uh, very involved with uh, work zone data exchange. So there, there, is, there is a good linkage there already. Um, what I would say though, is that um, it, it was a bit disappointing in the number of DOTs that participated in the, um, 
the interview process. I think there were about 26 uh, DOTs, uh, and and I believe they reached out to the 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 travel information folks. Um, so it was one of the the subsets of the DOTs. But um, you know, if you want to uh, promote your DOT for involvement there. Uh, let me know. I can put them in touch with the uh, appropriate people. Um, again, the, the goal there is to really build a foundation to uh, allow for better sharing of information from uh, between the DOTs and the, um, the, the various commercial companies that, uh, that are out here actually getting the, uh, the important information out to the, uh, the end users. So I would uh, be very happy to, uh, to do that for you all if uh, you want to be involved. Well, thank you, Robert, for that answer. And then once again, thank you to Rob, Brandy, and Tim for this phenomenal presentation. Um, once again, their emails are on the presentation slide, but you can also send your questions to info at and I'd be happy to co collaborate with the TomTom Tom team. And with that, I wish all the NISHIC members in the company a wonderful day. Thank you again, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Uh -oh. We can stop the recording.